Hey guys, and welcome to your non-spoiler review of Beauty and the Beast. I'm Perry Nemiroff, and joining me today is... Wendy Lee Zadie. All right, so the time has finally come. We've been talking about this movie forever. Disney is crushing it for the most part with their live action adaptations, and I think Beauty and the Beast is pretty much no different. The coolest thing to me about this version of Beauty and the Beast is just how well that story still works. There's a reason that they're retelling it, and it's not just for this. These mm-hmm. stories need to be retold. They're super effective now, and even though it is, it's very straightforward. Disney isn't doing anything new with these stories. They are essentially just retelling them in a live-action version, and even though while that may sound like, oh, another remake or reimagining, mm-hmm. why do we need that versus something original, it, I mean, I was so excited and like my heart was full by the end. I yeah. needed and I want to hear these stories again and I could still go back and enjoy the original too. I, I in fact just rewatched the original animated last night. But you're absolutely right, Perry. I think this is a perfect reimagined tale. They tweaked a little bit here and there to make it a little bit more modern, but it, it didn't take away from the original storyline. And as of right now, as of this review, I take everything bad that I said about Belle's dress. I absolutely <laughs> love the ballroom scene. That immediately sold me. I actually had a tear in my, okay, let's face it, I'll just be honest. The second the music started, I had a tear and then I pretty much sniffled through that entire scene. It was like watching my childhood come to life and it couldn't have been better. I was a little teary at the end. I kind of felt like that overwhelming sense of emotion. And you know, I mean, we're not gonna spoil anything here, obviously, but hopefully you've seen the classic at this point. Mm-hmm. And if you, have, if you haven't seen the classic, this could be a good entryway for you because you could still watch this movie and then go back and watch the cartoon and it's excellent both ways. But overall, I was really impressed by the entire cast. I think my one nitpick about this movie, and I say nitpick because it didn't take me out of the movie at all. I will say that I did not love the look of the beast going Mm -hmm. up to it. It bothered me a little in the posters and when I first saw the beast in the actual feature film it took a little getting used to but Dan Stevens' performance is why it works because the the beast doesn't look as real as I guess I would have liked him liked him to have looked yeah. but at the same time his performance is so believable it's so engaging and he works so well with Emma Watson in that yes. role I completely stopped thinking about it within minutes into the movie I unfortunately it was very it stood out really to me how bad the CGI was on the beast and I wanted to like it so much leading up to the film I was rooting for the beast like it's gonna look better on screen and every time I saw him on screen it took me out just a little bit especially when he had his interactions with Belle and that was disappointing except for the ballroom scene but I think because I was paying attention to the dress dress. (laughs) to the dress and also for me the MVP of this movie are uh, Gaston and LeFou oh my god phenomenal pairing phenomenal talent I love of all the songs and I think they nailed it. Yeah, there's no doubt people are going to be talking even more about Luke Evans after they see this movie because god, that guy has charisma for days. Oh man. I could look at his face in just about anything. Here though, every single time he is on screen, it's just the energy level goes through the roof. And watching him work with Josh Gad too. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk about another great relationship. They that dynamic works so so well and Josh Gad's character, LeFou, does have a nice journey throughout the movie, and I think how they capped it off for him really, I I mean, it made me feel like that character had a more fulfilling ending. So I really like how they changed things in that respect. Me too. And then also for the servants, do you remember me not liking any of the servants either? I take those back. They do work in the movie. They work Mm -hmm. in motion. And I am so happy because these are very near and dear to my heart. So I, of course, I want them to come to life. I never want to walk into this movie and be like, boo, everything sucks. Um, especially for Mrs. Potts and Chip. Yeah. They were the ones that I, I, I disliked the most out of everything. And in the movie, it totally yeah. worked. It's the whole package. Yeah, that, I mean, Emma Thompson voiced uh, oh, Mrs. Potts. And perfect. She, the, the voice casting is really spot on. I thought everyone did a great job. And also Kevin Klein too, who plays Belle's father, Maurice. Uh, again, an excellent in the role. And then just to talk a little bit about some of the musical performances, I complained a little bit when they released standalone clips that mm-hmm. I was not seeing what I wanted to see, but you know, that's when you're sitting there scrutinizing one minute worth of footage that isn't in the context of the full feature film. When you're actually sitting there and completely engaged and enveloped in what's going on, 
I didn't really think about that all that much. Maybe at the beginning a little, but eventually I think my connection to the characters and my love of this story just kind of took over and all of those little things that I was worried about or that were bothering me even at the beginning of the movie while watching the actual feature kind of faded away and that just goes to show how great Bill Condon and his team did when it comes to just like building this incredible world. The sets are the sets are beautiful. The music is great. The performances are great. The costumes oh, are spot yes. on. And when all this comes together, it makes it so atmospheric. And oh, I just I loved being in that world again. It was so much fun to go. I felt like I was taking a physical trip into Disneyland and just seeing Beauty and the Beast come to mm -hmm. life. I loved especially the two songs starring, of course, Gaston, the Gaston song yeah. and the Mob song. Were um, aside from Beauty and the Beast, were my two favorites from the film. Yeah. All right, so I guess that's kind of it. Do you want to take it first with your rating? Sure. I am going to, oh man, this was like a childhood nostalgia dream come to life, and it was amazing. My score for this movie is 8.5 out of 10. That's, that's a solid score. I'm going to go just a little bit lower because I'm still like a little iffy on the, the beast. And there's a couple things that I think could have been a little better. But for the most part, with these Disney live action animated movies, all I want them to do is capture what I love so much about the animated movie while bringing another layer to them. They don't have to be completely original or a complete reimagining. And I think that's what they're doing so well with movies so far, like Cinderella, The Jungle Book, and now Beauty and the Beast. If they continue on this path, I'm going to be a very satisfied Disney fan. I'm going. 8 out of 10. Yay. So that's all we've got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie review. We have so many more on the channel, so check those out, and we'll see you soon.